So here's an up close of these coilovers. They're, they look pretty decent quality for the price. Uh, I mean, it's all China crap these days anyway, so who knows um, how well it's gonna perform after, you know, once it's installed. But overall, just the, the look and feel of it, it's, it's a solid built coilover. Comes with these hats up top so you don't have to reuse the top like some of the tins and some of the other brands. These aren't the adjustable ones so they don't have the knob to adjust or anything on here. Um, I believe they come with new bolts and everything but um, I saw them in a bag in, in a box somewhere. <clears throat> anyway, the one thing that was different about these versus uh, the picture on eBay was this sleeve down here. On eBay, it was a they and they still have it now. Months later, after I bought these, they've been these things have been sitting in a box in my garage all summer. Uh, just getting get around to installing them. But the bottom piece here is a uh, on the picture it looks like a solid aluminum. The bottom with this piece is all single solid molded piece. This one is actually made out of steel. When I emailed them about it, they claimed that this was a better design that it was steel and it's stronger but uh, you know there's the weak points are going to be these welds right here um so i complained to them and they actually asked for 40 dollars off i only paid probably 220 230 dollars for these with a 15 dollar or 15 percent off coupon from ebay and then i got another 40 dollars off so i basically paid nothing for these things um but uh, so overall it's a uh, decent looking for now. I'm gonna go ahead and install them and then we'll test them out. First thing I'm gonna take off here, it's gonna be a 10 millimeter, take off the brake line, off the, right here. that 10 millimeter off, put the bolt somewhere, kind of pull the ABS line off to the side for when you take that out because if you pull this out, that the, the, the wire harness might pop out and rip out of, the, out of the hub. So I'm gonna just take this one out here just in case that, so I don't, um, so I give it some slack, the one on the firewall, but you probably don't need to do that if you're careful. I just put everything off to the side here. The next thing you want to do, you could, there's a 19 millimeter that, that holds the, the bottom together. So I'm just gonna shoot that off with the impact wrench. Comes right off. You want to take the nut side off because the nut side doesn't have the, the claws on it. The back side of it has the, the claws that grab into the thing. So, so that's loose now. The next thing you want to do is take off the ball joint up top here. Um, mine, if, if your car has never been lowered or you, I've got a camber kit on it, so the the camber kit actually pops off pretty easily. But if it's the OEM one, that ball joint is a pain in the ass to get out. Uh, when I originally lowered my car, I never took that out. I actually took the two 14 millimeters up here out, which was a really tight fit. Unless you have, if you have gear wrenches or something that can get into it, but if you don't have gear wrenches, it's pretty hard. But the nut comes out pretty easily, or it it loosens um, pretty easily. On the back side, there's actually on on the car side, the nut is held on by a welded piece, so it won't fall anywhere. But that was a pain in the ass when I originally lowered the car like 10 years ago. I'm just gonna take off this front nut because I recently replaced these boots, so. I know it's gonna be easy to come apart. Yeah, take the cotter pin out. C is the brand that uh, I use. They actually, um, when I originally put it on, I had to shave the arm up here a little bit to get it to fit right, because it didn't clear the, the slider to get to fix the camber. But uh, it wasn't designed for the two ISs. But the funny thing is they, uh, SBC now sells it for the 2IS. I, I don't think they made any adjustments to it. You still have to shave it, I believe, to get it to work. So, 
nuts off. The washers. All right, after putting it together on this one side and messing with the other side, I kept on unscrewing this thing and it looks like it went out way more than I thought. So when I'm, I looked at the threads inside plus the, the length on here, and I think I'm going to go in about inch and a half, two inches. Because um, right now, the way I have it put on this side, it, it's going to not have enough suspension travel and it's going to be way too low so I'm actually gonna put it, screw it in right now and get it closer to the the stock overall shock length that way um, yeah so I, it won't be so low so I'm just gonna I kind of measured it so I get all the threads through so it's safely t tied together and then I'm just gonna tighten it down right about here and then that way, now uh, I have the bottom set. I'm going to take, a, take apart this side again, reset that side. And then now, if I want it higher or lower, I'll just adjust the spring uh, side of it once it's on the car. Because that's what, usually back in the Honda days, that's what, all we did was adjust this side up here. So. so you can tell... The coilover shock right now looks like a lot shorter than the this shock. And one of the things is, you know, that it's all adjustable, so you turn it however you need to to, to get it. In. And then there's a lock ring at the bottom to turn that lock ring. I'm gonna get that other. Before I get too far. I remember to put the brake line mount on too. So this thing, you could probably put it on afterwards, but I'm just unscrew it now, get it loosened, and get it on. Alright, so I got a block in place. I'm gonna jack it up till it uh, reaches the reaches the shock. Just go ahead and reconnect to Get the nut back in. I'm gonna tighten down the upper. Jack this up so I can preload the suspension. Make sure everything's tight. Put the put ten millimeters for the brake lines back on.
initial adjustment was a failure, it looks like. I should have left more of the, you know, the bottom half screwed in. So when I lowered it down, it looks like now I'm, I've got like a two inch gap. Uh, before with my lowering springs, I had like probably a half inch gap there. So looks like that was a failure. I'm gonna have to take it all apart and readjust those, this sleeve at the bottom lower. Um, this side looks like even higher than the other side. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do that for now. I'm not, uh, I could adjust the spring down, but at this point I rather not do that because um, I want full extension on this, the spring and shock part on the top. But uh, so that way, you know, I can just lower it from the bottom. That way I still have all my dampening and all this, you know, suspension travel on the top half of the, um, the spring and coilover part. So, uh, so once I dial that down, if I want a uh, height adjustment at that point, I can lower it more or raise it more from the, the spring part. So I'm going to have to just kind of make some adjustments on both ends, the bottom half and the top half. So that way it gives me some adjustability. I probably will never raise it up unless I'm really rubbing. And even then, I'm just going to set it at a static position anyways. <clears throat> Alright, so I made some adjustments. So what I ended up doing was that the spring was about an inch up and it was under it was under a lot of tension. Um, so what I ended up doing, because all of my coilovers I've ever had before were kind of loose when I had it basically jacked up because, you know, you know, you can't really adjust it higher, any higher when you have it, the tension on it. So you want to have it when it's jacked up and there's no tension to have some, some movement. So if you ever wanted to adjust up or down, you would. So that's what I ended up doing, making it loose. So I'm going to, this is about an inch lower on the top hat part. So I'm going to put my wheel on and see what the gap looks like. <clears throat> All right, today I'm uh, finishing up the rear coilovers. I did the front earlier. And um, what had happened was I had screwed in. These things come from in the box, screwed all the way through uh, the bottom shaft here, but it, it spins loose. So what I, I ended up screwing it too far out on the front where when I lowered it, it was too high and I had to adjust it. Then when I did it the other way, I screwed it too much short. So it was too short, so the front was too tucked and slammed. So I ended up having to take it apart and adjust it again. So now I gotta, on the rear, I gotta figure out um, the perfect uh, length to adjust it before I put it in the car. So it comes fully closed and then the second one over here, I adjusted it fully open right now. So you can see the difference right there in the height um, of it. So what, <coughs> um, but I would highly suggest you guys just unscrew these like this, as far out as you can, kind of gauge where it needs to be and then adjust it down to what you think it should be before the one thing like on the front is this the top spring and the and the bottom collar it, right now it's got it's got tension on it so what you want to do is also to adjust the spring so there's not much tension on it because what happens is you want to be able to once you have it static on the car you want to be able to to raise it up half an inch to an inch and lower it. Um, obviously you can lower it as much as you want till it's tucked, but um, you want to leave at least some kind of slack on the spring so you could raise it up um, however you need to if you ever make any adjustments. So, yeah, and with the way these threads are, they're pretty, uh, pretty fine, so it takes forever to spin this out, especially if you have it on the car. It's much easier to do it off the car. Alright, so I got the wheel off, 
next thing I'm gonna do is start unbolting everything on here. So as you can tell, down here, the lower control arm, you've got basically this bolt right here and that bolt. You have to unbolt those two. Um, you probably wanna unbolt the sway bar too. That's right here um, while you're at it. That way you could lower this control arm. I think when I lowered it the first time, I might have left that on there and I had to pry this bar because it's got tension on it down to get the shock out. But you could do it either way. I've taken that bar apart before. The only thing you have to be careful when you're doing that is uh, on this car, I've got the AFS. So if you zoom in closely and, and look there, this, this right here is the AFS um, sensor. And some people screw that up and they, they, when they're working on their suspension and then they get the light. So that's a very common issue there. So um, you know, just pay attention to that if you have AFS. So as far as everything else, I don't, I don't touch or bolt, unbolt anything else on this because you want to keep your toe and everything else intact. All you, the only thing you have to drop is that lower suspension bar, uh, the lower control arm right there with those, you know, these two 19s. And what I've figured out, I forgot the first time when I um, lowered the car 10 years ago was you want to shoot the side. That the, the head of the, the bolt, the nut has got is an actual locking nut that locks on. It it digs into the metal of the control arm, so you don't want to unscrew the nut, or else you'll mess up that locking mechanism they built into it. So you want to shoot the head of the screw, not the nut on the other end. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, finally got that bottom screws out. The one that was holding the bottom knuckle here, I ended, it was, when it popped out the one side, it went in an angle, so I ended up just shooting it out with the impact wrench. And then the back one, there's a hole on here. I used the breaker bar. I just pulled the, released the tension, and it popped right out. So I got the two bolts out now. So my control, lower control arm is nice and loose. So the next thing you need to do is, um, there's two 12 millimeters that hold the, the top of the shock onto the body. To get to them, you gotta remove these two 10 millimeters right here um, to, that holds the fender lining uh, onto the firewall or the side of the car. So you just gotta get those things out and then um, it'll give you better access to those two 12 millimeters under there. You don't have to take the whole lining off, it just gives you enough room to, to kind of pull it out and access those two. So I just and for the coilovers you won't need you won't need these two screws anymore because they don't have these on the shock, the new shock. Alright, to so get to the top shock of the top of the shock tower you have to remove this lining in here luckily most of the stuff in the IS there's not many clips it's kind of just you just reach in here and pull the pull the lining out and it just kind of pops out and then you can see it right there so it's pretty easy to get to Got the ratchet Before you hit the rice, you just gotta loosen them all. You don't want that thing to recoil on you when it's too tight.
Once you get them loose, they spin back faster on by hand. So once those three are loose, you could get back to the bottom. All right, back to the bottom here. So everything on the top should be loose. What you want to do is use the, a breaker bar, tuck. There's a hole at the bottom of the control arm. And uh, you just get your breaker bar in between that hole and the bottom and you can use it as leverage to kind of push the arm down. Because right now, you know, unless the other option is to unbolt the sway bar and then loosen the inner nut. Watch the brake line. There. All, right, come All right, one thing you'll notice when um, you put them side by side is the design of it. Um, you can tell that so the OEM right here, um, the, sh the spring is kind of inverted because the top of the factory OEM has this, um, this part, which is kind of a spacer for the shaft and the, the shock and the spring is sort of on the lower half of the shock assembly and then you know you notice the coil over has a spring on top like a your traditional sus um, suspension on most other cars with the springs at the top so the one thing with this is most of that spring is going to be hidden under the cover here and it'll be pretty I guess you'll, you'll, you'll have access to this bottom piece to adjust and that's about it uh, on here and as you can tell my adjustment is pretty close to the the actual length of the entire shock now so hopefully I've got it dialed in perfectly so when I drop it down it's fine one thing I just noticed while I was in there was the top of the shock head has got to be rotated correctly so I'm going to reach my hand in here and rotate it because um, it's not a perfect triangle. So you guys got to reach up there. It's not that far up. Kind of rotate it and kind of feel around. Earlier when I was talking about the, the way the nuts are, if you look at the back of these nuts, um, this is the one that has a bunch of little notches and grooves that locks in. This is the one for the... Um, the, what you call it, the shock arm and this is the one for the lower control arm the, to the spindle so it's, it's got a, it's a little different, it's only got four of the prongs but you, uh, you don't want to turn these sides, you want to turn the, the nut, the, the bolt head <coughs> this. So now I'm going to put everything back together Just uh, the one thing that's a pain in the ass I'll tell you every time I've dropped this control arm is trying to line the control arm back into the spindle hole here um, you get one side in and then you gotta wiggle it in and get the other side to fit before I forget the 10 millimeters. Right, now that I got it lined up, I'm gonna put the screw on the back side of it. You want to preload the suspension, so I kind of I lowered it, kind of let everything settle back in place. I'm gonna jack it up just enough so that the car comes off the jack stand, just en enough where all the suspension is weight of the car is on the suspension and everything's tight or in place. Now I'm gonna hold the nut side. Load the bad board down. 
So I've got it right lower. I'll see if I my initial adjustments. Yep, so it looks like right now my car is actually higher than with the spring. So that means um, I can lower the spring down more up top. All right, so I adjusted the spring down about three quarters of an inch. See how low I get now. The one thing I did notice when I put it on though was that it, um, the spring, even though when I had it loose on the bench, once I put it on here with the pressure from the control arm, it actually compressed the spring more so it put more tension on it. But so right now I'm actually right at where I was on my spring. So that's probably the ride height I'm gonna leave it at because I've been riding like that for 10 years now, so I'm good there. All right, finally got done making all my adjustments and lowering everything down. So I adjusted my front down. That's my usual ride height right there, right on the edge of the fender. No rubbing, test drove it, slammed the brakes, hit some corners, everything looked good. The rear, I adjusted it down another uh, quarter of an inch to get some minor tuck there on there so Front wheels again just just enough so I won't rope too much uh, I still have all my fender lining and everything on this car so it's I just trimmed some of it just to get it uh, so it wouldn't rub that much. Um, there's the other side. So just minor tuck there. So should be good. 